Hey Travis, I have a confession to make. A confession? What is it? It's when somebody admits when they did something wrong, but that's an unimportant now. I just wanted to say I almost started this special Kids Corner episode without you, and I'm sorry. Well, you didn't, so I forgive you? Oh, phew. That's good. Thanks. You're pretty weird, you know, Joe. Are there lots of people out there, Flora? Yeah, I was worried that moving the drama shows from the school to the community center was just going to confuse people. But I think there might actually be more people out there than usual. Don't say that. I'm nervous already. You don't need to be nervous, Sage. It's no different than if we were reading scripts in Mr. Jacob's garage. Except that there are a bazillion people out there listening. There is not a bazillion people out there. You know what I mean. It's different. All right, kids. Are we ready back here? We're ready, Miss Diane. Okay. How about the props? Are they prepped? Mine are. Mine too. Hmm. Lionel, come in. I hear you. Everything looks like we're ready to start. Two of your kids in the wings said that they've got everything set. My, oh, oh, right. I'll head to the stage. Roger. We're about to start, girls. Stand by. Stand by? I think it means to hold on a second because things are about to happen. Do we have a choice? I mean, what? Whoa! Sage, are you okay? Yeah, I just leaned in that light and it it fell over. Yeah, I saw. Fortunately, I don't think we're using it for the show. It's too old. Like dusty and broken old or rare antique old? Like we should probably clean it up and hope no one notices old. We can't hide this. Sure we can. Besides, we've got to clean up the glass before someone steps on it in the dark. But the show! It's fine. We don't go on until after Paws and Tails. Help me with this broom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first of this year's fundraising drama shows. As you saw in the entryway, all proceeds from these shows go directly to support missionaries all over the world. And to start things off, here's Paws and Tails. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the celebratory drama, The Birthday Party, an adapted biblical parable about priorities. Once upon a time, there was a kid named Maggie. Hello. Like most kids, she had a birthday. Yep, and this birthday is going to be great. My mom is going to make a cake, I'll make all the decorations, my dad will pin up the pinata, and all my friends are getting invitations. She was even getting her birthday announced on the family hour. Yep, my parents went to familylife.org slash kids and signed me up. Sounds easy. It was. And so all the preparations were made. In the days leading up to the party, Maggie awaited news from her friends to find out who would be attending. Mom wants to know how big the cake needs to be. But after a week or so, she still had heard nothing. I can't take this anymore. I'm calling. Hello, new phone. Who's this? Hi, Cassie. It's Maggie. Did you get the invitation to my party tomorrow? Oh, you know, I don't think I can make it. Lots going on today. So busy. Oh, missed it. Are you playing a video game? Me? Video game? Oh, I mean, sort of. <laughs> okay, look, I just got the newest Super Tetris Deluxe 5000 that just dropped. It's going to take me all week to beat it, and I'm hooked. I can't possibly make it. Oh, I guess I understand. Okay, love you, bye. Hey, Maggie, isn't the world lovely today? Yeah, my birthday is tomorrow, and I'm throwing a party. Didn't you get the invite? Oh, yeah, it's right here. But enough about that. You'll never guess what happened. What? Alex just asked me out on a date. He's going to pick me up at 10 tomorrow, and we'll go out to all our favorite places. Imagine it. Him, me, all day. All day? You mean you can't come? What do you mean? My party. You're telling me you'll be too busy? Oh, uh, right. Your party. Yeah, I don't think I can come. Alex isn't really into parties. He's vegan. Wait, what does that have... Sorry, babes. I'll call you and tell you how it went tomorrow night. Kisses! And so it went. Every one of the friends that she had invited had some sort of excuse for not being able to come to her birthday party. Most people in this situation would start to feel pretty sorry for themselves, but not Maggie. She marched herself out to the nearest playground and shouted to all the kids. Hey guys, I'm having a birthday party and you're all invited. Actually, let me check with my mom. 
She says it's okay. The moral is that sometimes we get so interested in stuff in our lives that we ignore God when He asks us to be part of His plan. Things like video games, relationships, and whatever else you may like can be good, but when we make them more important than being with God, we will miss out on the best He has to offer. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the wonderful drama, The Representatives, an adapted biblical teaching about respect. Once upon a time, there was a very successful soda company. That's right, McFizz Soda. The best taste with just the right amount of carbonation and made with all natural ingredients. Of course, our Midwest branch goes by McFizz Pop, but what can you do? That's the owner, Mr. McFizz himself, and he's very proud of his company and his employees. Every one of them is like family, from the new hire in the mixing station to my vice president. One very important job in the company was going from store to store and making deals with the owners. So true. And that job goes to my reps. I couldn't do it without them. That's short for representative. I think we all knew that. Rep's just easier to say. Right. Sorry. I'm just kind of new to this whole thing. Not to worry. Uh, uh, Colleen, you're perfect for the job. You've got what it takes. Just pop out there and make friends and sell soda. <laughs> but what if the store owners aren't nice to me? Then get out of there and quick. If they don't respect you, then they don't respect the company and they don't respect me. Wilbur will show you the ropes, won't you, Wilbur, my boy? <sighs> Whatever you say, boss. Come on, Squirt, let's go. Um, it's cool. Well, okay, bye. And so Wilbur and Colleen set out to make friends and sell soda. So where to first? I'll worry about that. Your job is to do everything I say. I thought I was a rep like you. I want to learn how to do the job. You'll never be a rep like me. And the only thing you need to learn to do is to stay out of my way and not blow a sail by making dumb mistakes. As you might imagine, this didn't make Colleen feel any better about the job. And when they got to the first store, Wilbur did all the talking, whilst Colleen did all the setting up, hauling, and staying out of Wilbur's way. I mean, it's not how I imagined the job, but I'm new. Maybe it'll get better. But it didn't get better. In fact, things got worse. Hey, Squirt, go get me a lunch. I'm about to close this deal and you're obviously not doing anything useful. Hurry back, I'm hungry. On it! After a few weeks, Wilbur was invited to Mr. McFizz's office for a talk about future sales strategy. Come on in, Wilbur. I have something to show you that you might be interested in. Great, boss. What is it? It's a letter. A letter of resignation from one of my employees. I never like to see these, you know. It feels like I'm losing a dear friend. I'm sorry to hear that, boss. Is it someone I know? I'm not sure if you know her or not. You should know her, but according to this, you probably don't care about her at all. Ever hear of Colleen, my rep? You know I do, boss. She and I... Yes, I know. You work together. But it says here that you've been treating her like garbage since day one. I mean... I'm not finished, Wilbur. Sit down. I looked into this, and just to be certain, I called up all the store managers and owners in your district, and they all told me the same thing. Boss, I can... That's Mr. McFizz to you, Wilbur. I'm surprised to have to spell this out to you of all people. When someone disrespects my employees, they disrespect my company, and they disrespect me. You disrespected Colleen, you disrespected the company, and you disrespected me. I'm relieving you of your title of representative. If you would report to the mixing vats, I'm sure the manager there could use another cleaner. Leave your name tag. That will be all. The moral is that all humans, boy, girl, young or old, are, according to God, his representatives in creation. He loves every one of us, and he calls us to love each other as well. When we show God's love to others, we are actually showing love for God. And when we treat each other badly, let's just say God's going to take it personally. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the delicious drama, The Ice Cream Van, an adapted biblical teaching about creation. Once upon a time, there were two kids, 
Logan and Jean. She's my sister. We do all sorts of stuff together. Ride bikes, shoot hoops, build forts in the woods, catch spiders, tell stories, draw pictures. Yes, they enjoyed doing all sorts of things. But one thing they loved was... Ice cream. cream. Every time these two saw the ice cream truck, whether at the park, at their house, or on the days the truck would come to their school, Gene and Logan would be first in line for a summer treat. Yeah, it's the best. One day, as the kids were riding their bikes, Jean caught, out of the corner of her eye, a familiar sight. Logan, look! Ice cream van! You're right. Let's go. And so the two of them pedaled as fast as they could and got out their wallets. Mine's a purse. Right. Uh, sorry. All right, I've got my money ready. What's the holdup? I want ice cream. Me too. They waited and waited, but the van just sat. Maybe it doesn't know we want ice cream. Let's try to get its attention. Oh, good idea. I'm hungry and it's getting hot. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. What are you kids doing? We're waiting for ice cream. Yeah, can't you see the ice cream van right here? Sure, but you do realize this is a repair shop, right? This van is getting fixed. The driver won't be here until Monday. We don't need the driver. We've got the van right here. And we want ice cream. But without the driver, there won't be any ice cream. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. And so they waited and chanted and begged the ice cream van to give them their heart's desires. But in the end, it was just as they had been told. There would be no ice cream without the driver. No! The moral is that sometimes we think that things in this world give us what we need. The sun gives us warmth, the rain gives us fresh water, and the ground gives us food. The truth is that those are only the things God uses to give us what we need. Without Him, all of creation would give us nothing. Kind of like an ice cream van without a driver. Well, folks, that's our show. As always, we're glad you could come, and we hope you come back next week for the second show of the season. See you then. What a great show. Yeah. Um, where's Miss Diane? Why? You're not going to tell her about the big light thing, are you? I have to. I broke it. I mean, sure, but if she... Hey, girls. Great job out there. I agree. The audience seemed to really enjoy it. Yeah, um, Miss Diane... What's the matter, Sage? You don't look very happy. I, um, before the show started, I accidentally knocked over that stage light over there and it broke. Stage light? Are you okay? I'm not hurt, but that doesn't fix the light. No, no, it doesn't. I don't have a lot of money, but I'll figure out how to pay for it. Well, it's been at the community center much longer than I've worked here. I don't even know how much. I'll cover the cost, Diane. What? No, Mr. Jacobs. You just said you don't have the money, and I'm sure whatever it costs, I can handle. After all, you were here because I asked you to be. He's right, Sage. Just let him take care of it. He is on the community center board, after all. Oh, are you sure? Positive. Why don't you get your props and stuff set up for next week? Okay. Thanks, Mr. Jacobs. I'd better go check if Samantha's all right in the lobby. Um, Mr. Jacobs, why did you offer to pay for the light Sage broke? You didn't really have anything to do with it. That's true, I suppose. But I think a lot of it's because that's what God has done for me. God paid for a light after you broke it? (laughs) Not exactly. But I did break his rules. God tells us in verses like Romans 6.23 that when we do what is wrong, the eternal punishment is more than we could ever pay. Because he loves us, he decided to pay for it all. And according to 1 John 1, 9, all we have to do is admit that we've done the wrong thing and he will forgive us and make us clean in his sight. So when Sage admitted what she did, you did the same thing? Mm, I suppose I did. Now then, I've got to get back to cleaning up for next week's show. Would you turn off the radio before you go? No problem. 